Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today I want to talk about uh, a great piece of land, a great parcel that's actually right here that has an impossible, impossible easement, which pretty much makes the property worthless. So from time to time on the channel, I, I take a break from talking about farming, sawmilling, all that type of stuff, and usually discuss land because it's just something I'm very interested in. And here in the Appalachian Mountains, we have all kinds of unique parcels of land. So based on the great feedback I've received of some previous videos discussing land, this is a request that you all to talk about and to show examples of land parcels that have easements, so they're not landlocked, but the easements are a nightmare. So let me show you this. So I have my Pioneer parked right on the property line. So we're on the ridge of our south side of the property. So the parcel I'm talking about is an adjacent parcel right over my shoulder here. So this is a 35 acre parcel. It has really good timber on it. It has a decent lay to it in the, in, for West Virginia. In fact, it's got some, several benches that have what would make really nice house seats or, or barn areas or whatever the case may be. Whatever moderately flat uh, building you wanna make there. And probably the most exciting detail of this property is it's all south facing. So it's in a bowl right behind me and that entire bowl faces south. So it is an ideal location for that purpose alone. And about six months out of the year, you just get incredible views up here. And I'll show you here in a second. Um, the trees are starting to leave in, so it's blocking the view, but it's really nice. This is a decent high ridge in our valley, so you can see out pretty well. So it's a nice piece of land. Currently, the surface and mineral rights are owned by a small natural gas company here in the state. So what's the major problem you ask? Well, the major problem is you just can't get here from anywhere. <laughs> it's one of those geographical oddities. <laughs> There's absolutely no way to access this property. No, it's, um, it's actually inaccessible due to some history. So let's, let's go back in time and we'll do a history rewind here and explain what's going on. So when we consult our map here, you can see my South Ridge and the road that I'm standing on now, and the parcel further south. Now this road, this ridge that I'm standing on, about a hundred years ago, this was the county road. In fact, this was the red toolhouse road because the red toolhouse for the gas company used to sit further on down. And that's how my channel got its name because my property had possession of the old red toolhouse. It was kind of a depository for tools for all the gas and oil wells around here back in the boom. This would have been back in the 20s, 1920s. So sometime a while back, this road was abandoned and the road in front of my farm that you see from time to time on my videos became the new county road. Up until about the 1960s, people that wanted to leave our valley on that county road would travel west to go to another county road and be able to drive into town. Well, in the 1960s, the state road decided they were going to do this pretty good mountain cut and they cut all the way up the side of one of the tallest mountains in the area and put a road in. So, and it tied into a, a bigger county road and made uh, access to major thoroughfares and major US routes that much easier. So now all the traffic that leaves our valley heads east and that's what we do now. So the West Road that used to get you back to a smaller county road fell into disrepair and was, was pretty much abandoned, although the county says they haven't officially abandoned it like the road I'm standing on. But right now it's only accessible by four-wheeler traffic or ATV traffic. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to even get, uh, just because of the way it's grown over and slipped, you'd be hard pressed to get any uh, large size vehicle in there. So this parcel I'm talking about and I'm standing on here has been cut off two county roads ago. <laughs> so it's really in a hole. The thing that makes this even more ironic though is right over my shoulder, I am now, uh, my back is facing west, right over my shoulder is a turn where the gas company has a right away, has the existing county road easement. They still use it to access some wells on my neighbor's property. So they come in from time to time, do maintenance, and they come in um, in either uh, ATVs or four-wheel drive pickups. So technically, this parcel is not landlocked. It has an accessible easement that leads right up to it. In fact, the, uh, the turn, 
the turn where the road turns off of my property then crosses the, the uh, westernmost corner of this 35 acre parcel before it travels onto my neighbor's property. So there is a legal easement to access this 35 acres. So I'm standing here at the turn where the, the easement, the gas uh, maintenance right away, the easement that comes in, the Old County Road, comes in, makes a hard, almost 180 degree turn, and goes back to the well on my neighbor's property. And I'm standing right on the edge of the property line, the 35 acres I'm talking about is right here. So you can see this is the type of road, and that's really the problem, this easement, because of the access, you can't get here from the county road that's in front of my farm. You actually have to go all the way back to the other county road further north in the county and turn off on the old county road that, uh, that once was open. And that's where uh, full-size vehicle traffic can come through. So that makes that over two miles of driving on roads like this. Now this actually isn't too bad. But when you get over to where the ATV traffic ties in, then you've got a road like this with random foxholes placed throughout. So it's accessible most of the time in the year when it's dry in a four-wheel drive vehicle. I, I should probably say a Chevy four-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, you could get back here. But there's times when it's really wet or snowy, you're not getting back here even if you're running chains. So you may be asking, well, Troy, is there a more obvious or more direct route to get out of here where the owner of this property could say, hey, can I come across you for an easement? I'll pay you, blah, blah, blah. Well, it could be possible. You could go straight down south through the valley, but you'd have to cut through my neighbor's 250, and at the bottom of this valley is his very large pond. So it would be tough to cut a road and not end up impeding his pond. So that wouldn't be a good idea. The other opportunity would be to come north on to me. But it took me almost 40 minutes to get up here. A, that was because there's a lot of wind damage and, and uh, treetops down from the snow, the ice storm that we had earlier this year. But it is almost two miles back to my front of my property where we do all of our stuff. Very windy bench tops, uh, old logging roads are, are how I get up here. And that would also require that person to come right through the center of my valley, right beside my sawmill, right beside my barn, which you know isn't a good idea. You got to keep in mind in West Virginia, if you want to travel in a straight route to anywhere, you most likely need flight feathers. So this land by every bit of reality is extremely, extremely landlocked. But when you look at it on the deed, it doesn't show landlocked. It actually has a legal easement right up to it. So not only would that driveway be almost impossible to maintain and to put in, because you're not stopping the ATV traffic and they're going to wallow that out but just imagine what it would take to get utilities up here. This would have to be an entirely off-grid situation. You do have south facing, so you'd have that working for you for solar, but um, you know, well, septic, um, all of those things would have to be completely off-grid because you're just not gonna get any utility services up here. So when I walk about 50 feet onto this property, you can see there's just some really nice timber, some good looking red oaks, some great looking some white oaks behind me there, another red oak. Just a really good stand of timber here. Again, there's no easy way to get it out. <laughs> and you can see the remnants of the gas industry and the oil industry here. There actually isn't an active well on this property. Now I know there's a lot of you already screaming at your mobile device or your computer, and I'm gonna say, just keep your pants on, I'm getting to it here. The question you may be screaming is, Troy, why don't you buy the parcel or why doesn't your neighbor buy the parcel? Well, I've lived here 20 years and I have tried several times to buy the surface rights to this parcel. I've actually waited until the gas industry was really in the gutter when things have dropped and dangled that carrot to, to buy the surface rights off of them. They ain't budging. Uh, a lot of these companies don't like to turn loose of land. So this parcel really just becomes no man's land. There's, there's not much activity going on it. I don't even see the gas company come this way. In fact, there's been a, a branch that's laid down across this section of road that's been there for about two years now. So I know the gas company doesn't even actually come up to this area. They stop at the turnaround going back to the well. There's no reason to be up here. These, all these wells are capped and they've been um, laying fallow for years. So this is one of those things, should the gas company decide to sell, maybe they really got to dump assets because they're losing their butts for whatever reason the gas market's doing. I could see them putting this on the market and saying there's a legal easement and kind of dangling a carrot, maybe even dangling a really good, maybe even dangling a really good per acre price. 
but without really putting eyes on this, without walking it, uh, you may get your hopes up too quickly and discover that this is a tough one. This would be a tough nut to crack. So this area where my property and this 35 acres adjoin is probably one of the, the most beautiful sections on our entire farm. I just love this ridge. I love the south facing. You know, right now the sun is, is sinking pretty low. You get this awesome light, get some great breezes coming through here. Even in the middle of August or July where it's really hot, you can come up here and just always get a cool breeze. So it is something that appeals to me. I'd love to have at least a portion of this parcel, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's another reason why I waited to come up here uh, this late in the day to shoot this. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a pileated woodpecker. He's carrying on. And then just a second ago, a barred owl just fired up. So coming up here right before dark and hanging out, yeah, all kinds of wildlife gets fired up. Everything around me, you can see the wild turkey been scratching and just really enjoying a lot of the mass that's still on the ground this time of year. Well, I really enjoy these conversations about land. Post some comments below. Let me know what else you guys want to talk about when it comes to land and easements and parcels and all that kind of crazy stuff. And I'll see what I can do. I'm not, I don't claim to be an expert, but there's stuff that I've run into, or there's obviously some quick research we can do talking to other people that know. Another neat point about this is uh, up here is, is my phone's been dinging like crazy. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but this is the one spot on the property where you can actually get cell service. So my phone's been lighting up like a Christmas tree since I haven't been off property in a couple days. But it, uh, <laughs> so that would be a, a plus for some and a negative for others. I'm kind of fine without having the cell service. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. Y'all take care.